Well, welcome and thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Guy Finley. I'm the executive director of CDSA, the Content Delivery and Security Association, and the chief executive officer of the Trusted Partner Network. I'm here today to talk to you about the Trusted Partner Network and give you an introduction and an overview uh, into the platform and its benefits uh, to our major constituencies, which are uh, the content owners and vendors uh, to all, sir, all the content creators, uh, whether it's film, television, um, and even on to other forms of media and entertainment, games, music, um, et cetera. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna page through about a, a, a 15 page deck to kind of give you a broad stroke understanding of what the program is, how it functions, how it was formed, um, and we'll close by, uh, by talking about our next steps and where we go into the future. So uh, to begin, the Trusted Partner Network is a new global industry-wide film and television content protection initiative. Uh, we call it the TPN. The TPN works with companies to help prevent leaks, breaches, and hacks of their customers' movies and television shows prior to their intended release. The Trusted Partner Network TPN is a joint venture uh, between CDSA, the Content Delivery and Security Association, and the Motion Picture Association of America. CDSA and MPAA have been the leaders in third-party uh, entertainment industry assessments um, for over 10 years. Uh, we both have maintained and developed our own individual programs. Um, and it was through our board of directors and through the content security working group at the MPAA uh, that we decided to come together, uh, take the best bits of who we are individually, um, and form this industry-wide initiative. Ultimately, TPN is about uniting our industry's efforts. It's about optimizing workflows and, and elevating and scaling security for our business. Fundamentally, it's, it's, a, it's a concept where you have a single global central directory of trusted partner vendors. Uh, and it allows all content owners to have access to that information and that list um, at their fingertips, all in real time and all on one secure platform. And essentially, uh, what we're doing is we're taking a, a very disjointed, uh, disjointed process and unifying it underneath the platform. And we really think that this is, uh, is it's a it's a first step towards where our industry needs to go. And honestly, uh, in, in taking into account the Entertainment Technology Center um, and their mission, uh, this is absolutely a compliment um, to not only that association, but also all of the associations in the industry and their constituents. Uh, this speaks to security directly, uh, but at the same time, uh, this global directory um, allows any business unit um, to be afforded uh, the privilege to go in and view this information so that we can take it out of uh, the archaic ways uh, of email, Excel spreadsheets, phone calls. Uh, the idea is to have this directory, again, be something that is reliable, uh, something that is fluid, um, and something that is agreeable for all participants, uh, whether it's a content owner, a vendor, or even our qualified assessors. We believe that the platform is kind of a window into uh, the security state of our entire industry. And of course, you know, going, thinking about that from an overarching concept, we also need to expand uh, our community of, of not just assessors, which this obviously bullet point uh, comes forward, but also vendors. Um, and it's our plan uh, to work over the next few years to encompass the entire vendor uh, database, basically, for the entire industry. Really to, really to take it to the next level um, and kind of weave the fabric um, for how Hollywood will work in the future. Of course, we're gonna elevate the security standards and the responsiveness of the vendor community uh, by actively engaging um, with these vendors um, to really let them look at how are they doing internally? What are, what are the key things that they need to accomplish and do um, to maintain a secure facility or a secure workflow uh, to ensure that they're handling their customers' content with, with the utmost uh, responsibility um, that they're obviously entitled to. And of course, uh, speaking earlier, uh, we're increasing the number of third-party vendor facilities that are assessed annually. Um, that's also critical. It is an annual process uh, with the idea that as we keep rolling, uh, that we'll eventually encompass just about every single vendor that works with a, a studio or a television network. And then of course, as the tool rolls out and people become familiar with the platform and are using the platform, we're gonna use it to assist the entire community in identifying vulnerabilities and also to communicate those remedies uh, to the, the vendor community, also to the content owner community um, through the platform itself. So the platform really is an application suite. Uh, it's a GRC, which every, uh, everybody pretty much knows uh, what a GRC is. Essentially, it's a, it's a single place where you can house data, house information, um, and get a better idea of what's going on. 
you know, platform as a service is something that's impacted our, our business within the last couple of years and become essentially accepted as the way that we'll do business moving forward. Um, this really leverages it through these three uh, unique um, areas where each everybody works. So the app itself is actually uh, an iPhone based app uh, and it's used by our assessors, our qualified assessors, um, to actually perform the audit. Um, this used to be done on pen and paper, sometimes uh, in Excel or in uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, but the reality is, uh, as, we, as we look to what this information contains, uh, we want that to be in a secure environment um, and not necessarily be, uh, be PDF'd or, or transmitted through, uh, via email. So the assessors themselves work within the app and that's their primary place to be. The vendors work through uh, the vendor portal, which is another segregated area where it's their insight into what they're doing. They answer questionnaires. Uh, basically, they get remediation items. Uh, they communicate with not only uh, their assessor, but also with the content owner through that vendor portal. Um, but it's, it's designed also to be able to distribute it amongst that uh, company internally. So it's not housed around one single person and one single point of access. Um, you can delegate responsibilities and roles um, yourself, or the vendors can themselves. And then, of course, there's vendor roster. Uh, this is the tool that the content owners use uh, to go in. Currently, we have about 2,000 uh, vendors within the system. Um, and as that rolls, we, we expect that number to increase. Uh, we could get up to 5,000 over the course of the next couple of years. Um, but it's the vendor roster that, again, is uh, you know, permission-based, role-based, um, so that you can even give top-level information to things like sourcing and procurement, um, other business units who are maybe out working in the field and require a service and they want to use a secure vendor. But really that's what TPN is and does, is it says these are the people that have gone through the process, this is the state of their security. Um, it's identifying the good actors in our space. And for years, security has been a challenge in our business. Uh, it, it's, it's been something that we, we know is utmost, it's, it's of the utmost important to the, ven uh, to the vendor, obviously because of their business relationship with our customers. And the idea is, uh, to, again, to house that in a single central spot so we, we can identify the people who have gone through this process quickly and easily. So let me give you a, a little bit of a view um, in terms of the framework and how it works. Um, we start on the left uh, with a content owner and vendor roster. Uh, they'll request an assessment um, within that uh, vendor roster, which essentially unlocks uh, the vendor portal uh, so that the actual facility can start asking questions. CDSA and MPA kind of sit in the middle of this in the background. We're the governance structure for the entire, um, entire program. MPA has worked on best practices for, again, for about a decade. Um, CDSA also had a standard as well. Um, that MPA best practice will still be the governing document uh, for the overall program and process. Uh, but what it does is it basically iterates controls uh, that you can assess to, right, within the iPad app. So we manage the framework, we manage the tool, uh, we also uh, manage the, the control process because, again, with any good software, it's iterative. It's something that, it, that grows and builds and gets better as people use it. Um, so that's part of CDSA's role is to, to maintain that framework so that we can constantly update this, uh, this, uh, the control framework for the, the, the program. And ultimately, it's those best practices um, that will remain and will become iterative as well. Maybe not quite in uh, such a rapid uh, real-time pace, uh, but ultimately, that's where we look for the guidance uh, to complete the audit successfully or to be a qualified assessor as well. And then when you look at TPN, self-service workflow management, uh, we have individual qualified assessors, uh, and I'll, I'll speak to that program as well because that's a cornerstone of this program, uh, to be able to trust the assessor that's coming into your facility and analyzing this information and taking down these notes, absolutely critical. Um, we've got the vendors over here to the right in vendor portal. Uh, the, the assessors obviously are in the TPN app on their iPad. Um, and then what happens is from a governance perspective, the MPA and CDSA help with the QC, the quality assurance um, for these reports. Because once a report is published, it's a snapshot in time, it's an annual assessment. So we have to make sure that those reports contain the proper information, the proper language, are readable, uh, not just by the vendor itself who's being assessed, but also by the content owners. There's got to be a consistency to it so they can make those decisions um, in real time and quickly. Now, if you'll see here, there's three major areas, site security, application security, and cloud platform security. We're in the site security bucket right now. Um, essentially, we're taking a 10-year-old a, a disparate process and unifying it um, under one core platform. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about that. MPA has traditionally done assessments for the six major studios. 
um, over the last 10 years. CDSA um, has run a vendor-driven uh, certification program for, through their standard um, and through their assessments, um, with the idea also that those vendors uh, pay for the assessment and own that assessment and can give that assessment to whoever they please. Uh, the issue with the MPA assessments were they were owned by the MPA, they were owned by the six studios, and that was really, that was the sphere of their influence. Um, super effective, um, obviously, for the six studios and a core part of their MPA relationship. Um, but we're trying to shift that and take the best of that, work it into the platform, and, and give vendors the option to go through this um, and be able to share that TPN audit, even outside of the portal, um, with prospective customers. The slogan that we're using for the TPN is one industry, one audit. Um, a lot of other industries already have, have this framework in place. Um, we're following those guidelines. Uh, we, we just essentially wanted to make this efficient um, and, and drive it to a cleaner fruition and make it affordable as well. Application security will roll out within the next four months. Um, the first core uh, framework uh, principles and the first update um, to the best practices will show, uh, follow shortly. Um, and within that four months, we're also working in concert on cloud security. Cloud security is obviously the future of our business. If you, if you look at site security kind of as the rear view mirror and we're, we're fixing what has been done in the past and getting everybody on the same page, cloud is really where we need to be. This is where the workflows are moving. This is how we will do business in the future. But it's obviously far more complex uh, when you talk about digital infrastructure as opposed to physical infrastructure. And ultimately with that cloud uh, and application, uh, those developments for the tool, we're also going to rely on our, our vendors, we're going to rely on other associations um, and take the best of the best. Uh, we're trying to make something efficient, but at the same time, we do not want to afford it against quality. Uh, the most important piece of this is to have something that's robust, something that's got integrity, something that people can rely upon. Um, so we're certainly not going to the bottom of the barrel. These are, these are rigorous assessments. It's just a, a better framework um, to deal with them within. And I spoke before about the CDSA program being a certification program. Um, we're making it very clear that TPN is not a certification program. It's an assessment. Um, and TPN as a body uh, does not approve a vendor uh, to, be, to be utilized by a content owner uh, in any part of the process. All we're doing is taking a snapshot in time and offering those core criteria and verifying compliance with these applicable minimum security requirements the content owners obviously have to make the assessment themselves. Um, they, assess that, they assess that facility and decide, and ultimately give the approval um, for the studio to use that vendor. So that's also something that has to be very clear. We aren't, an, uh, uh, you know, you're not an approved vendor within TPN. Yes, you're part of the trusted partner network, you're within the database, um, but that approval is gonna come from your customers if you're a vendor, um, or if you're a content owner, you need to make those decisions about your vendors as well. Uh, we're just trying to make that decision-making process a lot easier. So I spoke earlier about the, the best practices being the, the authoritative source for the control framework and the relationship around it. This slide really illustrates uh, what that process is. Uh, the best practices is not a thousand different prescriptive controls. Um, it gives overarching advice and guidance uh, around particular areas within workflows and within facilities that need attention from a security perspective. The controls really come out of it. We develop master controls. Um, which have service category uh, mapping within TPN. So it identifies essentially what piece of the business you're working on, what does that facility really handle? Are you doing ADR, are you doing, doing post-production work, are you doing VFX? Um, and those master controls are iterative towards that process. So when you come in and say, I do this, I do localization, you're not gonna get a list of 800 questions and controls that you need to answer, of which 60% uh, you know, of them could be NA, NA not applicable. Um, it's absolutely dynamic to your business. Um, and again, that's an efficiency piece for vendors to allow you to, to take the proper amount of time to answer the proper questions correctly. Now, of course, with a master control, we can have derivative controls. So as we scale out uh, our digital infrastructure, uh, there will be many more derivative controls uh, that will be based around what you're doing, but it could be also uh, your workflow, your digital workflow. Um, has different bits that are added in real time based upon your customer's needs and, and your ability to perform those duties. Um, those derivative controls are the, are the ones that will show up um, within your service category mapping. Of course, every, uh, every facility goes through a questionnaire process. How do we know all of this stuff? 
Um, we basically take your questionnaire, uh, you start with an initial questionnaire that's very high level, but it's the extended questionnaire that's critical. Um, we take that questionnaire um, and essentially uh, verify that when we do an on-site assessment or do a remote assessment by phone. Uh, typically our assessments will be on-site uh, for the first round, uh, but ultimately uh, it's meant to be a process that, that depending upon the need and depending upon how sensitive the material you're working with and where you sit in your workflow, um, it could be accomplished by a remote assessment as well to just verify that, 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 that information in that extended questionnaire. And then of course, once you go through that assessment and we verify things, there could be things that you need to fix. That's the remediation process. Um, and ultimately the remediation process, once that completed, once that is completed, we, uh, we publish the report. And then down here on the bottom line is around that assessment request, what happens? Uh, I, I just ex explained it, uh, but that gives you at least a, a plan, right? Vendor verification, your extended questionnaires, you do the assessment, um, and then you report and have your remediation plan. Um, once that uh, is completed, you will be identified as assessed. Um, you'll have a date on that, um, and you're expected through the TPN to undergo an annual assessment so that we can uh, go in and see any changes that you made from the previous year um, and assess accordingly. Um, this is some control examples. Uh, there's a lot of fine print on here. Uh, at home, you'll be able to read this. Um, essentially, uh, the core framework uh, for the controls um, is based around uh, the MPA best practices and or the old uh, CDSA standard. Um, this gives you an example of a control um, where it's referenced, because uh, the idea also is, is you should rely on your experience doing these assessments. Uh, you may have undergone an MPA assessment. You may have been a CDSA certified facility. You will recognize and be familiar with these because in the framework we reference those controls um, from the previous iteration or from the best practice that's live. I spoke about qualified assessors. Uh, this was really the game changer and really where we started to mimic other industries. Uh, the MPA governs this program, um, and individual assessors, not, not audit firms, right? Individual assessors can come from an audit firm, um, but they undergo a strict review uh, and an approval process um, to their expertise around securing pre-release entertainment content, and, and basically TPN serves uh, an international community. Uh, our idea is to have qualified assessors all around the world. Um, obviously, we started in the two major hot points for uh, entertainment content, London and uh, Los Angeles. Um, but we've received uh, almost 100 applications to date, uh, and they're from all around the world. The idea is if we're going to do an assessment in Australia, um, let's use an Australian assessor and not necessarily have to pay for travel from Los Angeles, uh, New York, or London to get into that area. Same thing goes for APAC, EMEA. Uh, the more assessors we have, the more qualified assessors we have in the regions around the world, we believe that we'll drive down the, uh, the cost of the assessment and also increase our footprint in terms of who is actually working um, with these uh, content owners. So the vendors request an assessment uh, and, and complete the information uh, in the portal. Once, once you've gone through your extended questionnaire, uh, it unlocks the qualified assessor selection process. You select the assessor as a vendor um, and essentially negotiate outside of the TPN uh, the price for the assessment um, and, a, and a schedule for the assessment. Um, then once you've agreed upon terms, you come back into the portal, um, you pay your fee to the TPN, and we schedule that assessment and it unlocks in the assessor's iPad. Um, we're doing this to have a market, uh, a market uh, price structure. We don't, TPN does not deal with price. Uh, we think the market will bear and determine these. Um, and we want to be outside of that process. And, and again, it's a voluntary program. Uh, so it, the idea is to give you the flexibility uh, and, and the time frame, obviously, dependent upon your customer's needs um, to be able to do this quickly and efficiently. They, again, uh, they renew annually, and the, and the cost of an assessment is, is negotiated on the case-by-case -case basis. Um, but ultimately, we think this will benefit the industry, and we think this is a better path um, for the constituents, for the vendors, for the content owners, as well as the qualified assessors. As part of that review process, we evaluate these individuals and establish that status. It's something that we feel they'll wear as a badge um, of honor. Um, and it's also to avoid, obviously, uh, inexperienced or new assessors to come in and essentially learn the business on a vendor's dime. Um, we provide governance and quality, the MPA provides governance and quality assurance for the program. Uh, the MPA does testing at their office. It's actually a proctored test. You leave your phone outside of the room. Um, they happen at MPA offices around the world. We proctored in Belgium. Um, we've got Singapore uh, coming up. We, that may have happened uh, this week, obviously, by the time you're viewing this. Um, but that's the idea, is to have a real sound, solid area uh, where these people can be tested, vetted, 
um, and, and gone through the process. And the idea is also that they have strong information systems assessment proficiency. They've got a robust knowledge of the entertainment supply chain um, and also the associated technologies dealing with it uh, to help enable that process to be uh, easier and more efficient. Um, it's that expertise that we really need in our business. So of course, uh, what, what's the benefit to the vendor? Um, and as we go through this slide, um, these are six core benefits, but uh, there are many, many more. Obviously, we want, we want to reduce the number of assessments that are conducted at a facility uh, annually. Um, because of the old structure, you might get an MPA audit, you might get a CDSA audit, and you might have major content holders coming in throughout the year. Um, some facilities were getting audited five, six times a year, um, essentially by the same body in the same industry. Uh, this is meant to clean it up um, and provide you one industry, one audit again. Um, we also wanted to reduce the number of, of different controls. We wanted to have it all in one spot so we weren't all over the place uh, from a control perspective. Um, and it's our responsibility to ensure that those controls are robust and agreed upon by the content owner community. We wanted to create a competitive market-driven assessment pricing program uh, so the vendors can benefit from that. Uh, then we want to also accelerate the turnaround time on these reports. Obviously, by digitizing these systems, um, it will be a, a, a quicker and a cleaner process um, for, your, uh, for your facility to go through. And again, on that iterative control framework, we wanted to make sure that we only offer the controls that are specific to your working environment, and that was certainly a complaint in the past. And again, when you complete this assessment, uh, you join the TPN, uh, you're in our logo licensing program. We want you to promote your security preparedness um, to your existing as well as potential customers, and uh, the vendor roster um, helps that as well. So for content owners, uh, the core benefits here, um, it's about creating that single central database. That, that's core and critical. Um, but we also wanted to elevate the responsiveness and the security knowledge of the vendor community. We wanted to, uh, to allow content owners and vendors to collaborate um, in a safe environment um, with colleagues and peers internally as well as the general industry to improve the platform and improve the process. Um, we wanted to expand not only the community of assessors, but we also want to expand the security community in this town. Security is probably the number one focus um, for a business uh, in this day and age, and it's absolutely critical to your infrastructure and to how you do business moving forward. Uh, this just puts it front and center um, and gives your, uh, your executive team also the understanding of how critical these processes are. Um, obviously, increasing the number of facilities through that annual assessment is, is another primary goal. Um, that also helps content owners. Uh, and also, the, uh, assisting in identifying the vulnerabilities um, and communicate those remediation plans um, through uh, the TPM platform. That's another critical piece. The responsiveness and time, especially in the digital age, um, to these vulnerabilities is going to be critical. Um, we're, we're, we're using the platform to essentially communicate uh, those, those remediations as well. And of course, uh, you're governed by the MPA and CDSA. Uh, again, this is a joint venture. Uh, we have roles and responsibilities as each association. We try to take the best of the MPA and the best of the CDSA and put them together. A little crunch and munch, a little peanut butter and my chocolate. Um, and ultimately, it's through these two bodies uh, that the trusted platform, uh, the trusted partner network platform um, is succeeding. It's been a lot of work. It's been, uh, it's been actually very fruitful. And I'm very encouraged by how far we've come in the amount of time. We launched on April 3rd um, and had our first event at NAB uh, in 2018. Um, our first betas happened in uh, May, uh, and we have done our first assessments within the tool uh, just this month in June, and we're absolutely on, on schedule. Um, if all goes as planned and as tracking uh, to the numbers that we have currently, um, we're looking to do anywhere between 150 and 250 assessments this year. Um, that will eclipse uh, the joint effort of both CDSA and MPAA um, in literally in nine months of the program running. Um, so we're very encouraged by this activity. We're very encouraged where the industry is going. We also think this is a blueprint uh, for Hollywood uh, to really start platform, you know, the platformatization. I don't know if that's a word. Maybe I just coined it. Uh, the platformatization of Hollywood is uh, starting with this tool right here. Uh, 25 content owners, 2,000 vendors to date, going up to 3,000. I'm hoping that at some point we'll have 100 qualified assessors in here uh, serving this international community. Uh, and as we move into the reality phase of this, you're going to see a lot more work uh, by uh, CDSA and by MPA and by the TPN itself to promote this program, to promote the champions, uh, you know, the, the, I think we're calling them ambassadors, the ones at a company that are responsible for this, understand it and understand how important it is. 
Um, and we're going to really grow this community over the next 18 months um, to where it really needs to be. And we feel we're a little bit behind, but at the same time, we feel we're also ahead of the curve. Because uh, like I said, I think this is the first platform of, of its kind um, created for the industry. So we're very proud of that as well. Okay, I'm at the end of my time. I don't think we have any time for questions. Um, but here's the contact information um, for the TPN uh, Board of Directors. Uh, Dan Robbins is our chairman uh, and president of TPN. Uh, he works at the MPA, he's been at the MPA for uh, over 20 years. I'm obviously the chief executive officer. Ben Stanbury is our chief technology officer. Uh, for his day job, he runs security at Disney. Uh, no small task. Um, and Kurt Fisher, also from the MPA, he's our COO, our chief operating officer. Um, and uh, he is in charge of all the governance and the programs um, for quality assurance uh, at the MPAA. Um, we're all very accessible. Um, we, we want this program to succeed. Uh, we feel it's already succeeding, and I'm so excited for the next uh, six months especially to be able to report at the end of 2018 just how far we've come, just what we've done. But in the interim, if you have any questions, you're welcome not only to, to email us, but go to the website, ttpn.org, thetrustedpartnernetwork.org, ttpn. Uh, there's frequently asked questions. If you're a vendor facility, you can sign up for a TPN assessment. If you're uh, somebody who's interested in becoming a qualified assessor, you can sign up there as well. It's a, it's a resource. Uh, we also have uh, media, uh, not only stories that were written about us, but we've done a webinar. There's a recording of the webinar up there. So ttpn.org is, is your place for immediate instant information. We'll keep that updated as uh, this program rolls out. So thanks so much for watching, um, and I hope to hear from you soon.